Hello everyone, I'm Marina and this is Sacramel School. It's great if you can sculpt the nails, because the gel polish does not fix all the nail problems. This video is for beginners and for those who want to learn how to do a gel nail sculpting. We're going to sculpt the gel nails and do an almond shape without filing. It's going to be really exciting. Subscribe to the channel and let's get into it! Look at my model's hands. I've already done an extension on one of them. And what a huge difference! Gel polish can't fix all the problems and transform all the nails, so it's great if you are a universal nail technician. If you know not only how to apply gel polish, but also sculpt the nails, then you can transform any hands. Today I'll show you how to do an extension from start to finish in detail. The first important step we pay attention to is a nail plate preparation. It depends on this stage whether there will be any liftings or not. I check my client's nail type. These nails are flat with a small arch. I can see a red area above the cuticle, which means that the capillaries are close. I need to manicure extremely carefully. So now I'm going to lift the cuticle with an orange stick and a diamond drill bit. And I'll cut the cuticle later. I normally do a manicure right away, but if you are just learning, there is a good chance that you will hurt the client while filing. Lift the cuticle and clean out the pterygium. Sculpt the nails and cut the cuticle only after that. I chose a red abrasive drill bit to lift the cuticle, because this cuticle is sensitive. Forward position, 15 to 17 thousand revolutions per minute, I process the left side on all 10 nails at once. Many people ask if it's possible to do a classic manicure before nail extension. Yes, it's possible, but don't steam the hands too much, as the nails will get moistened and it can lead to liftings and chippings. Turn off the speed, switch the rotation direction and process the right side of the cuticle, side sinuses and lateral folds. Note that I won't cut the cuticle now, I'm going to cut it later. I pay special attention to the lateral sinuses. In order for the paper form to set up tightly, so there is nothing to interfere with it. The cuticle is lifted, now it's time to shape the free edge. I'm filing it off completely. If the client's nails are short, the distal fold protrudes or your client has a habit of biting their nails, we can leave a very small free edge from half to one millimeters. Here I file off completely, especially at the points of the nail growth. It's important to keep these growth points at the same level. If one is higher than the other, don't file it even more. Why is it important to remove the free edge completely? If we are sculpting a square, the paper form needs to be lifted a bit upwards, but the nail's free edge won't let us do it. The next step is to mat the nail plate. I'm doing it with a soft 240 grit nail file. I'm not using a buff, since we need the scales of the nail plate to get well lifted. I lay my file on the nail plate and make long moves from left to right. We don't randomly move across the nail plate. It's important for us to lift up the scales properly. You can also perform this step by using a diamond drill bit. I set a low speed of 5 to 7 thousand revolutions per minute, forward position, moving from right to left. It's crucially important not to press on the nail plate. Mat the nail plate so that there are no shiny areas left, especially on the sides, as it can cause liftings in those areas. The next step is to apply some preparative adhesive products. The first one is a dehydrator that really dries the nail plate. The second one is an acid-free primer, which acts as a double-sided tape. It improves the bonding between an artificial material and a natural nail plate. 
The third step is a gel base. You can replace it with a base for a gel polish system, but you need to test how well it will suit your sculpting gel. So these are three points that provide a good bonding and in no way can be skipped. I applied a dehydrator quickly to the whole nail plate. Don't be afraid to get on the skin. I apply the primer with a firmly squeezed brush, sometimes I dry it on a napkin. This one brush is enough for a few nails. If there is too much primer, it can also lead to the liftings. It's important not to get on the skin and in the side sinuses because the primer gives a sticky effect and the gel will flow into the sinuses. The primer needs some time to dry. If you have already applied it to 10 nails, then you can apply the base cut starting from the very first nail. We always apply the base in a thin layer with rubbing motions. I mean that we should move the brush back and forth so that the material could get between the scales of the nail plate and provide a better bonding. You can also use a separate brush. It's not necessary to use a brush from the bottle. There are transparent single-phase gels, which can be used without applying the base. But I prefer to be on the safe side and apply the base. Now cure in the lamp for 2 minutes. My favorite stage is setting up the forms. And I know that it's the most difficult thing for many nail techs. There are different forms, for example, paper, plastic or metallized. If you are a beginner, it's important that these forms have a good adhesive base so that they don't open during the cure process. Additional marks are also important because it's easier for you to cut them out. I would like to focus on this moment more detailed. I'm looking at my model's nails. They get wider to the bottom, so I recommend choosing slimming shapes. And today we are going to sculpt them into an almond shape. Tear off one paper form, remove the inner circle and cut the form out with scissors. It will be easier for beginners to work this way, because the form won't get stuck to your gloves all the time. The first step is to twist the form. Because our nail plate has got an arch and the form should follow it. In such a twisted state, I set the form on the nail plate. I can see a gap between the nail and the form. I can lift the form up to cover this gap. It will go, but the form will go upwards as well. This setup doesn't work for an almond shape. It should go flat or be slightly tilted down depending on the length of the nails. We have chosen the medium one, so the form should be placed flat. In order to remove the gap between the nail and the form, we need to remove those extra parts of the paper form that push it out. So now I'm making a hole wider with my scissors, cutting it wider, not deeper. We've got a square hole like this, putting it back to the nail plate and the gap is gone now. The next step is to make marks in order to release the side folds. So that they don't push out our form and it doesn't stand wide. I mark diagonally lines from the nail growth points. Watch that the center line continues the center axis of the finger. If you are a beginner, you can just make 7mm deep marks to make things easier for you. Then the form will be freely wrapped under the nail plate and the side folds won't disturb us. Or you can still cut out the holes from the folds, simply round it, and we get such an ear. The same on the other side. If I turn this cutout form over, it reminds me of Mickey Mouse or a bear with round ears. Did you see a bear too? Give the thumbs up! Once again, we place the form on the nail and make sure it fits. And only now, at this stage, I can peel off the form from the substrate. I stick it together right away. It's important to stick it evenly, tip to tip. I make a small loop. This is how the ready form looks. 
We can open its tips. Now we adjust the tilt of the client's finger. Set up. Adjust the tilt of the form. Stick the back tips. Turn the hand to the side and check the symmetry to make sure that the form is set up straight. If it goes sideways, remove one tip and fix it as you need. Only after these steps, when we are sure that everything is good and tight, we can press the form. I'm making it a bit narrower, we can see a triangle from the top. The paper form shouldn't be wide or open in this place. Otherwise, the nails will look like spades. If the upper tips are glued together, this indicates that the form is flat or slightly tilted downwards. Since you're just learning to sculpt the nails, it will be easier for you to set up the forms on one nail at a time. Set the form, apply the gel, set the form, apply the gel, and so on. Once you get more experience, you'll be able to set up the form on two to four nails at once and then lay out the material. Which gel consistency is the best for a beginner? It's more convenient to work with thick or medium gel consistency. You'll have some time to fix it and it won't lake as quickly as a liquid material. Usually it's difficult for beginners to work with a jelly gel and a souffle gels because they require much more proficiency. I'm going to use a high viscosity gel to form the underlay. It doesn't seem liquid when it's in a jar, but it spreads out evenly when applied. I'm using a synthetic brush to pick up the material. I grab a small amount from the central part of the jar, put a drop on the free edge. I've chosen a camouflage material on purpose, so you could see that it's easier to learn with this base. I stretch out the length and then form almonds. I don't touch the nail. I slightly pull the top of the material only. Be sure to cover the point of nail growth with the material well, so that there are no cracks. I turn the finger to the side and sculpt a proper sidewall. First, there is a straight line and then a smooth ascent to the top. The marks on the form guide us how to do it the right way. I turn the hand to the other side and I lay out the material on the left. If you don't lean on with your pinky finger, the brush will get too deep and you won't get a smooth coating. I'm sculpting the final shape straight away, no extra material. I don't form a square, the free edge should look as if after filing. If you have laid out any excess material, clean the brush and remove it. Cure in the lamp for one minute. This way, I build the underlays for all the nails first. In fact, a lot depends on the correct form setup, the wearability and the look of your future nails. You just need to practice doing it. By daily practice, you will learn how to do it quickly and you'll be able to set up the forms easily. Don't use the squares on the form as a guidance, because we cut the form and the squares go away. Compare the lens by placing the nails cuticle to the cuticle. Remove the axis, so we don't have to file the lens for too long. The nail plate on the index finger grows downwards, so I'm cutting the form deep enough. Have you noticed that I fill up the form, but it doesn't stick much to my gloves? I'm holding it really carefully, barely touching, as if holding the butterfly wings, which I don't want to ruin. It's important to set up the form correctly, with no gaps, since some gel will get into the gaps and there will be a layer under the nail, which can really annoy your client. They will pick it and may break the nail. I have a video on my channel about an incorrect form setup, so make sure to check it out to avoid any mistakes. Now setting up the form, making sure there are no gaps, but I can see that it is lifted up. No, 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 don't fool yourself. Set up the form correctly and cut it out. The form should fit perfectly to the nail plate, like puzzle pieces to each other. 
If your client feels discomfort or burning during the curing process, let her know that she needs to take her hand out of the lamp and wait for the burning to stop. And then pull the hand back for the final polymerization. If the free edge lacks symmetry and one point of growth is higher than the other one, the form should also be cut out asymmetrically. But everything will fit tightly once set up to the nail. I lay out the gel, compare the lens and remove the axis with my brush. We're done with the underlays. Now removing the forms, degreasing, removing the sticky layer and filing the free edge. It's important to do it correctly too. I'm peeling off the substrate with my nail, pressing it and lower the form down. If you lift it up, the thin underlay may break. The underlay thickness is 0.3-0.5 mm. Now I'm degreasing and shaping the nails. Imagine that you are giving a shape to the natural nails, making the elegant almonds. I can see an almond shape from the top. Now I'm fixing the lower parallels, moving straight and smoothly ascent to the top. I turn the hand to the side to check the symmetry. Be very careful during filing to prevent any underlay damage. I'm removing dust, degreasing and starting to cut the cuticle. Why am I cutting the cuticle at this exact stage? Because I want to apply the sculpting gel closer to the cuticle to make the nail growth less evident. I also want to lay it out with almost no filing, so not to hurt such a thin sensitive cuticles. To form an architecture, I'm going to take a more liquidy gel, so it self-levels faster. I'm dipping my brush in a jar of it and apply a thin layer to the whole nail plate in three moves, so the gel spreads out on its own. Grabbing a large drop that's used the nail length, putting it on the highest point and stretching it out. Putting the axis back to the jar. At an angle of 45 degrees, I push the material to the cuticle over the entire perimeter, starting on the left, through the middle, to the right side of the cuticle. You can pop the bubbles with an orange stick or a thin brush. Slightly tilt the model's finger down so that there are no cuticle leaks. I was talking to you for too long and the material started to leak on the sides. Now I'm turning over my client's hand. I'm using a thin brush to form the correct architecture. Imagine that you're doing a nail alignment with the base, but you're just using a really thick base. As a result, we should see a highlight on the coverage under the table lamp. This will indicate that the surface is flat and we can cure it in the lamp. If your client's nails are white or trapezoidal, as my model's ones, they should be pinched to make them look beautiful and narrow. For doing this, I'm going to use a nail clip. When the client feels burning, it means that it's the highest polymerization level. And it's the exact time for you to pinch the nails. I'm putting the clip on and set it to the lamp for a curing. Mind that in no way it should hurt. If your client feels pain, that means that the clip got on the skin. It's incorrect and painful. You need to fix it and send to cure. We continue to sculpt with the gel on the rest of the nails. Moisten the surface and grab the drop. Place it on the highest point and clean the brush in the jar. Spread it near the cuticle, all around its perimeter. Make sure there are no leaks, it's really important, since all the leaks will turn into liftings. This is what the nails look like after sculpting. If there is anything you don't like or the material has leaked at some parts, you can remove the sticky layer and file it off. Now we can cover the nails with a colored gel polish, a top or create a nail design. Do whatever you and your client wish. Eventually the nails should look really elegant. 
thin at the ends, not more than 1 mm, because the whole architecture is built in the central stress zone. We decided to create a simple design using a foil and a matte top. It's going to look great! I really like the way the minimalistic designs look on the camouflage base. For the design, I'll be using this thin foil, looking like a leaf gold. Thinly cut the nail plate with any base or apply a sticky primer to make the foil stick. Cure for 10 to 15 seconds. Applying larger fragments in gold foil and the smaller ones in silver. I top the design with a medium layer of a matte top. If you're worried that the foil will chip, first cover it with a glossy top with a sticky layer, and only then apply a matte one. I'm confident about my top, so I'm applying it right away. I'm covering every two nails and send them to cure, removing the sticky layer. Now I'm putting the drops of a glossy top on the foil using my thin brush. The top coat should be of a medium consistency, so it doesn't run out too much. I'm doing one nail at a time and curing in a lamp. You can use a portable tube or flashlight-like UV lamps. I'm applying the small drops of the top coat. And we get this 3D effect, as the whole nail is covered with a matte top and the design is glossy. Curing the lamp for 10 seconds. Once I reach the first nail, I will dry for 30 seconds. Me and my model are absolutely delighted with the results. Thin and elegant nails. It took me about an hour to sculpt the nails on one hand. It doesn't include filming time and I couldn't work by a conveyor method. So, an experienced nail tech can perform it in no more than two hours. Try this technique and use it in your work. Give this thumbs up if this information was useful. Success in your work! Bye-bye!